Well, hello, friends. It is TechSag's Rewind. Here's the beauty of what's going on right now. I got the fan show guys with us. There's somebody who's ready to use the studio at 11 a.m. It's 10.58. I'm going to take my time. I see them watching. And you know what? That's the kind of mood I'm in. Hello, friends. We had a good time today? Hey, yeah, we sure did. Hey, good morning. it's the soccer Up, hater. Uplifting hey. show. We need, we need soccer. more soccer talk. That's what we need. I hate soccer. I just don't understand it. That's all. Well, that's I, I'd like to. I want to understand it. Soccer is exciting because at any given moment, the entire game changes. We just lost everything. Sorry, guys. Now, for our four people left. Uh, let's talk about the hardwood. Kelly, you liked what you saw from the basketball team? Looking good. Five I'm seconds really or less? Really happy. What'd you, did you, any of you guys hear McGee and uh, Swope together today? I did. Mm -hmm. We yeah. need more of that. That was good. You need it? more yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. we're all going to go snipe hunting. You want to go? And there's a, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, there's a eight, like fun. eight snipe limit, limit per day in Texas. Have fun. All right, let's go do it. We had uh, AT around Let's college football. Fun. And these guys, they gave out their like predictions, or not predictions, excuse me, of their awards. Who was the best player on offense, defense, best freshman, all that and more. It is Texag's. Rewind. A and M played, especially in an in a uh, ten minute stretch. They played about a, a perfect a defensive game as you can play. Yeah. And they uh, they turned those what they, what's the old line beat them like a rented mule. They turned the Mustangs into a rented mule. Yeah, they did. Uh, it was it was very dominant second half. It was uh, very impressive. I mean, they were they were good the whole game. The first half, they were definitely the better team. They just never were able to sustain that lead long enough. Yeah, and that's that, that's, that's not basketball. that unusual, right? Uh, as the game progresses, depth takes a toll. Um, just the fact that you're the better athlete and basketball player takes a toll. In fact, if this one kid from SMU, uh, their guard number one, they had a funny name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I can't think of it right now. You know, he's bombing threes more than he had all year. And if not for him, they really had no other option because a &M was taking everything away. One thing, a couple things I noticed. I think the score could have been significantly more <laughs> worse for SMU. a and missed a, a bunch of shots up close. Uh, early. Early, yeah, yeah. A bunch of shots like just, you know, either they were fouled or it, they didn't call the foul sometimes or they just were off on these breaks. Mm. But they were, there were some gimmies yeah, there. there were, uh, I think, Henry Coleman – Missed three, I don't want to call them easy layups, but may, layups you expect him to make. There you go. Um, to start the game. And yet he ends up Was the rest of the game. He scored 23. And so if he missed three, then he made 10 of his last 15 shots. So he, after missing his first three, he shot 66.7%. He had himself You'll take the game. that. They were really – it looked to me, OB – um, that they were making a concerted effort to go to the paint often. Like, they well, well, wanted to score in the paint. Yeah, I think so. But also, I mean, they were getting it done. And, and, yeah. uh, and you know, SMU really has more high down low. Yeah. But uh, a and th there was one play early, just spectacular ball movement. And it led up and to you're talking about uh, the Anderson pass in the middle when they had three three passes and they got the ball to uh, Henry. To, to, no, actually, I think that was to uh, uh, Julius Marble. Marble and he, for a dunk. Yep. And you're like, man, if you know, if that's what we're going to be seeing tonight, this is going to be fun. Well, I went to the Alabama game last year. I hadn't been many football games, unfortunately, because I've three three boys. Yeah. Young, a lot going on. Mama needs help, but I went to Alabama game last year. Went to a quarter of the Sam Houston game. Before the weather got bad? Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then I went to Miami game, and I went to LSU game. So they're 4-0 in the last two years. Mm. Yeah, baby. Love to see it. As far as Swope knows, the team's 4-0. Hey, right? Let's go, baby. Well, and when you go, apparently they block pretty well, too, because the Bama game is where the light clicked. Yeah, and I'll certainly oh, yeah. say the the Miami game it was better than we had seen in some of the other games, and for sure the LSU game that was the best the line has looked. It, oh man, it was no impressive. doubt it. Did. It was a different football team we watched. Uh, I think they were real decisive. Uh, they mm -hmm. looked confident. They looked like they were having fun. They found a groove, and I think that we just we did some different things offensively that worked. And I I loved the tempo that we played with. Yeah, and. Um, we were aggressive and felt like just guys stepped up and really made some plays. And, and I thought Jimbo did a, a, a good job of calling the game, too. Um, what, so. why, why do you think it was different? Well, why wait till that game, or is it comfort with your quarterback and some of your younger players? You know, they were able to get in a rhythm early, which I think matters, especially with a bunch of young guys on the offense. And then 
just kind of building that confidence up early. Uh, I think Jimbo's successes, like all the games Ryan's talking about, I think they get off to a good drive. I remember Alabama last year, they got off to a really good start. And then there develops this belief. I think momentum is a funny thing in college sports. And so that's I think huge. that's a huge deal for, for a young football team. And then I think just making the easy plays matters. Yeah. And then feeding the rock to A-Chain. We talked about that going into the game, <laughs> yep. I think, on, on show yeah. was for this team to have success – you're going to have to run the football well against the LSU team. And they did that. They stayed committed to it. They didn't abandon the run. They didn't let the RPO game deter him from getting his carries. You know, he ended up getting his touches. And it wasn't perfect up front. But A-Chain is a good enough player to where he makes people miss. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many, how many free safeties it's, and it's, strong safeties were in the box? It's incredible. At the line of scrimmage and air tackled. You know, it's just... His yak is so impressive, man. It is. And he's just so good in space. He, he's fun to watch. I think y'all were talking about kind of, is it yesterday where he's going to fall in the draft yeah, if he yeah. goes? And I, th- I think, Some what's, people the lady, are, what's the lady that y'all had on? Shereen she's Williams. Gonna, Shereen, yeah, she was going to talk to the scouts, but they were saying like Maybe fifth, fourth or fifth round yeah. because oh. Isaiah did that. Yeah. No, oh, man, that guy's got to be. I'd get him in the second or third if I could, just because I think you can utilize him in so many different, different ways. ways. Yeah, yeah. And how about this though? So in the world of NIL, what is the <laughs> signing bonus? And I know it's hard to project. I, every yeah. player thinks they're going to get drafted higher than what they end up getting. Yep. But if you're a fifth round pick, what do you what are you making? Two hundred thousand. Yeah. Signing bonus, and you're not guaranteed a roster spot anymore, especially a running back. So there's a mm-hmm. good chance you're on practice roster making one hundred and fifty thousand bucks. What does it then take for you to come back for another year? He gets to run track, have a lot of success there. Maybe go to the Olympics. Maybe go to the Olympics and potentially make more money and graduate from Texas A&M and be a part of a really, well, hopefully better football team next year. Who knows what we're going to be. But We need him. I mean, he, he, he's... There's, there's something to be said there for that. I agree. I think if he was sitting there trying to make a decision, I think that there's a lot of upside on coming back. Well, I think that's why it's important for players like you to say this out loud because if he's listening, because I think they have agents in their ears like, dude, you go in the first round. I've talked to so-and-so. You're going to make $6 million, whatever. Like, well, look at that track record. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all you got to do is just look at all your friends that you've played with over the last three years that thought the same thing too, that didn't get drafted, and that didn't even make a practice roster spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unfortunately, the stats are against that. And now, get, get it, A-Chain's a different player. And he's got elite speed, and so there's someone's going to be attracted to him for that. And he's got the tape; he's had the production. But is he going to be up there with the Alabama back? Like, no, he's not. He's not going to be the the first round pick type player. And there aren't a lot of those anymore at running back. They're not. It's hard for a team to take that risk because. And what someone told me the other day is like, AJ is a great player, but if you lose a guy like that, or you lose one of these freshman running backs to the transfer portal, ah, it's a running back. We'll yeah. replace them. The positions you can't replace are the obvious ones. A game changer at wide receiver and quarterback. Well, you know, I, I, I forget if we talked about this because it's been a few weeks. First of all, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I forgot to mention that. Same to you, bro. Um, so, uh, yeah, man. So, no, I mean, listen, I, I never bought the Lane Kiffin stuff. Um, now, I talked about it like crazy because it was great content, but I, I always felt like he was leveraging Ole Miss to get more there. And so once you get past that, you know, I think we can all do the song and dance about, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is what he did in the past. It's like, here's my thing. I think, you know, the stuff that we know, you know, it's on his Wikipedia. And I've talked to him about this. I've had him on my show. It's like, it's on his Wikipedia page. It's never going away. Um, But in terms of the stuff that he got fired at Ole Miss for, my stance is, you know, if 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 his wife has forgiven him and his kids have forgiven him, it's not my place to to take a more high ground. Now there was some other stuff that came up over the last couple of weeks, is you know, like any big coaching search, you know, you start to dig through the past, whatever. And I bring that up to say, like David, you've been around this for a while. This is why you hire a search firm, right? And and if there's any doubt, and I think John Cohen even kind of referenced this off the top, is like you know, thorough vetting, all that stuff. Is like this is why you hire a search firm, and so. If they found anything that they thought was truly unscrupulous, then you, you you don't hire him or whatever. But at the end of the day, and and part of what you know, Texas A and M's problem this year, right? It's a results based business. We could talk about this, that, the other thing. You got to win games. And Hugh Freeze, obviously, I believe, is the guy that puts Auburn in the best position to win the most games possible in the SEC. Obviously, we know about the two wins over Nick Saban. 
But I think more importantly, this isn't just a guy that won in the past in the SEC. He did really well at Liberty, transitioning that school from FCS to FBS. He won 10 games in year two, was 8-1 and one this year before he ran into the buzzsaw that was UConn football. Uh, and obviously, look, he won in at Arkansas this year, which I think speaks to that the guy's still got something left in the tank. So to me, I, it, it, listen, if you're either an Auburn fan or an opposing fan that the guy just makes your skin crawl, okay, whatever, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But like I said, what we know he's been very vocal about, very transparent about. And again, if his, if his wife and kids have forgiven him, it's not my place to decide what's right and what's wrong. And now we just get another really good coach in the SEC, and I'm really fascinated to see how it all plays out. What's going to happen with Dion? You know, I, I don't know, man. You know what I what I said yesterday, and I and I truly believe it. And I think there's a little bit of a parallel in Texas that I'll explain in a minute. Is I, I do find it very interesting that you know within 24 to 48 hours of the season being done. Um, Nebraska hired its coach, Auburn hired its coach, um, Georgia Tech, you know, Trent freaking Dilfer is a head coach. Uh, what's the other one I'm missing? Arizona State, Wisconsin, et cetera, et cetera. And so I just find it very interesting that Colorado is just kind of like, no, nah, we're, we're not in a rush, no, nah, transfer portal, no, nah, we're good, we're, we're hanging. Like, to me, it, it's just something doesn't add up unless – they feel really confident that he's their guy. Um, and maybe, you know, they play a game this weekend. Maybe they, they're willing to wait an extra week to see if he'll take it. But it feels like it has to be something more than that, at least in my opinion, and I could be totally wrong. So that's my kind of armchair analysis of that situation. But again, it could, with Dion, it comes down to everything that everyone has talked about with him is, is, you know, it's hard to know what his end game is. He's obviously not motivated by money. He's given back some of his salary actually to Jackson state to, to help the football team and the football program. So I, I, you know, I just don't think anybody really knows what his motivation is. And until we find that out, we, uh, you know, we're we're not going to find that out until we find out an an answer at Colorado. But again, I, I just find it very interesting that everybody else had their guy in place within 48 hours after the season. We're now, you know, six days removed from Colorado's season being over, and they seem content to just hang out. And by the way, and we know that he has the, the offer, too. That's been, he himself has confirmed Bruce Feldman's report, which I find interesting. There's many things that we would like to fix, right? Mm-hmm. So what is something, what is the, the main thing, and we can't just say offense. I want, I want us to be specific. What is the main thing you would fix for next year? Um, I mean, O line. O line. It's got to be O line. I mean, we we can literally look out there and see just from this game, even even the previous games. All right, Connor Connor's the guy. All right, I don't think we I don't think we doubt that Connor is a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Right, you can see it. I mean, true freshman learning the ways out there, but but he I think he's the guy. Yeah, I feel like we've got good skill position guys. We've got great receivers, Moose Stewart. Noah Thomas, I think, is going to be really good. I, I mean, too. he looks the part. Um, you've got a good stable of tight ends. Um, and they they showed up. They blocked well for they they blocked for a chain well. They uh, I know we didn't get, have a lot of catches from the from from them. Donovan Green had a couple of big plays, but the tight ends look good. Obviously, the running backs have been. I mean, even when even when a chain was out, Amari Daniels came in had two huge runs, um, and so everything offensively looks really good. But they're not producing because of the O line. The quarterback doesn't have time to throw. There's no holes open for the for the for the running backs. And so it's. I think the our entire success leading moving into the future has to be around that O line. If that's one A, would pass rush be one B? I would just say defensive aggression in general. I would say defensive rush tackling. defense one B one A. What was it one B? Yeah. So. I, I don't think we're getting – it's a physical issue. I, I think it's a scheme issue. And I, I was shocked that LSU did not try to take advantage of that more, right? They, I thought they attempted to pass way too many times. Yeah, it, It's it's a problem. It's been a problem all year. I think it's a scheme issue, and Durkin's got to figure it out. That's It was it was poor. I very, can tell you this. Very they're poor. doing a lot of thinking out there, yeah. and they're not doing a lot of playing. Defensively, and my, and that's That's the whole front seven, in my opinion, is they're thinking a lot, but they're not playing a lot. And that slows us significantly down. And I do think you're right that part of it's scheme. They're thinking through the scheme in their head as opposed to just doing it. And that's 
Makes us half a second late to everything we do. Just na- be naturally move, you know, run, you know, sideline, yeah. sideline. But I think one defensively, one A would be tackling. I mean, we there's so many. I mean, our tackling was not great. It was poor. It was poor. And I mean, I'd even put that above a, pra- a pass rush. Um, but you then, know what? The funny thing, though, on, to to not totally interrupt you, the LSU game was the first real game where the O line looked really good and the pass rush, especially in the second half, and and just. Getting past the line was really good. That they controlled the line of scrimmage yep. on both sides. All right, gentlemen, what do we do now? Like, share, subscribe, comment, all the all the above. Come back for more. Definitely you, comments, positive ones about how great the fan show is. Have you done it? Absolutely. Okay. Have Have you on days, I don't get the I don't get to get the whole show. I go to YouTube and, and, and do a quick catch up. Hit the bell, notify us. All right. Thanks, guys. See you Bye. later.